paint with a broad brush, kind of how we got back here. And then uh, I'll ask uh, Mr. Lohan to fill in the details uh, from there. Uh, last month we met uh, as a park board. Uh, we have a rate policy in place that defines discount categories depending on, uh, I guess, the definition for that specific category. Um, uh, single, married, um, family, uh, guardian, resident, non-resident, military, business. So there's a, a myriad of discounts available at demand, depending on where you might fall into that. Uh, the topic uh, at that meeting was the married portion of that. Um, uh, the Ohio Constitution defines marriage between a man and a woman. Now, if I was in church, I'd say, what was the line from the movie? If that's not God, don't pick it up. So, <laughs> um, uh, so we, I had made a motion uh, to extend that discount um, to any two people uh, that were joined in union. So that would be same sex and heterosexual, uh, and that motion was defeated. Uh, council indicated that they may want to look at that and that an ad hoc committee may be created. In the interim, uh, two meetings were had by some council members, but a committee was not created at that point. Um, they decided to not create that committee, bring it back to our board to see if we wanted to discuss it further. So that's why we're here right now. Um, Mr. Lohan is our uh, park and rec superintendent. He was in both of those meetings, so I'll ask him to give a little more detail on the discussion of those meetings, and then before we go through that. that question, what you just said. Council reported back to this body to see if we want to discuss it. That's what I go ahead. That, 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 that is in my update. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I, I think I will answer that question in my update. Okay. If I don't, then we'll okay. do it. And I, I know I saw Diana and Terry. I don't know if I saw Carrie here, but I'll do okay. Yeah, I'll do my best to update what we covered. And of course, if there's something you feel I left out or didn't cover correctly or whatever, uh, I'm not sure it would be uh, acceptable. My uh, to, to go ahead and, and uh, have your own thoughts. But uh, yes, and after we met, I, I, I chatted uh, initially with Diana and said that uh, before we talk about potential of chain, uh, we have a rather uh, sophisticated rate structure, and uh, my old background uh, would have said this would have been a re-engineering project, and as part of re-engineering, the first thing to do is understand the as-is model or understand the current system that you have before you start talking about changing it so that you don't get the potential of unintended consequences. So the more we talk about that, uh, I think it was decided that rather than going down the formal process of, a, of an official uh, ad hoc committee from city council, a few city council people would meet with uh, myself and Ed and at the time, uh, Lori Vistner, who, uh, by the way, uh, our director, facility director, Lori had a 10 or an eight pound baby, and Heather had a uh, 10 pound baby, so they both had baby girls and all as well. But anyhow, uh, she was in that meeting um, to, to discuss uh, with uh, Diana, Terry, and Terry uh, Snyder, our, our current system. And, and it was my initial when Diana and I talked on the phone that I said, so how long do you think? I said, well, I don't know, an hour, if it goes longer than an hour and 15 minutes, uh, your head will probably be swimming. It actually went about three hours, and I think heads were swimming. Uh, so anyhow, in that, in that first meeting, uh, we took a lot of time and walked through the rate structure that we have in place, talking about the, uh, the single, the uh, spousal rate structure, the family rate structure, uh, the business rate structure, the guardian rate structure, and how all of those had some interplay in the qualifications to go into them, and they had nuances of uh, resident, non-resident, and so on. So it took us uh, the better part of that, that first uh, meeting, three hours, to just kind of get our arms around the current rate policy that was, I believe, established in, in 2003 that was actually in place in September of 2004 when we opened. 
So no decisions were made other than we needed at least one more work session. Uh, and, and then in that second work session, uh, we invited Paul Janis, our law director, so that if um, some thoughts were made as far as the possibility of changing the rate structure uh, to determine if any of those uh, changes uh, would in fact be legal or illegal, and, and Mr. Janis was there to uh, answer those questions as far as uh, the legality of any of the uh, uh, topics that, that might have been considered. Uh, I'll paraphrase, and Diana can stop me if I say it wrong. Uh, at some point during that, we concluded that what I call the silver bullet that everyone was looking for, just make it a household, everybody realized in those work sessions that given the rate structure we had, household would not work without disrupting the whole scenario. And the belief was if we made change, we did not want to have an increase on any of the current members. And there was no simple way in the concept of household to implement that, no reasonable way to implement that. And uh, paraphrasing other Diana said something like, you'll never hear the word household out of my lips again. That doesn't mean there aren't options. That meant the, the thing that everybody kept throwing out, just make it a household and it solves all problems. And, and after many, many hours of looking at it, it, it became apparent that household was not the silver bullet. So as we worked our way through there, uh, I think at the end of the uh, evening, that evening, uh, the consensus uh, uh, was to ask this board to consider uh, taking the topic back on uh, with a couple of, uh, I'll use the word recommendations or thoughts coming from that work group, uh, specifically from the council people there. Uh, one was, um, to in essence do nothing. Uh, according to Mr. Janis, do nothing as far as changing any of the rates. Uh, that things like same-sex, uh, recognition of same-sex couples and so on and so forth, I don't have the right circuit, but it's somewhere high up in the federal court system right now, and he feels that unquestionably that issue will reach the Supreme Court, at which point the Supreme Court will make a decision on that covering the law of the land, and that uh, maybe we should just let it, let things stay as they are for now, let these kinds of issues work their way through the court system, and um, whatever's decided, then our policy is always to, to follow the law. That was sort of one premise that would be asked as a, as a reconsideration of copy. The other one was a combination of Mr. Janice and uh, Mrs. Calavecchio <clears throat> that we could change the rate structure in such a way to walk away from the, the word uh, using marriage at all in our uh, definition in the, where, where we talk about uh, spousal discount. And rather than talking and using the word husband, wife, spouse, uh, etc., we would overlay that or replace, I guess is the better word, with the word adult. First adult, second adult in that household, and then all other rules under our current rate structure would apply. Um, and Mr. Janus felt that that would then not violate the state constitution because nowhere then would we be referencing marriage as part of our, our rate structure system. The uh, uh, downside from my position as superintendent of Park and Rec, this is a financial issue to me, I know there's lots of issues out there, but for me right now it's a financial concern. Uh, our best uh, analysis shows us that um, that particular proposal would cost us $49,000 on an annual basis uh, based on our current membership. If we were to take our current membership and replace the term married, spouse, etc., with one adult, two adults in the same household, that would cost an auditorium at the time we did the study $49,000. Our belief is that would be a $49,000 recurring um, uh, number, which we would have to make up in, in some way. The recommendation, although as was stated, not the only way to do it, but the recommendation or a recommendation brought forward uh, by Mrs. Calvecchio is that we pay $49,000 less a year in debt 
and therefore would extend our short-term notes by, and I did an amortization schedule, we did it considering that, the, the, the impact of the uh, $49,000 on a, a less debt payment uh, over, the, uh, over the period of time. So at the end of our meetings, and again, I will uh, uh, answer any questions, Basically, uh, the three council people said we, we are going to ask the park board to reconsider, but whatever decision the park board reaches, they will support or uh, accept that position that it is the park board's decision to make. And the city council, at least on the part of those three council people, uh, could not speak for the other eight, but that those three council people would support the fact that this is a park board decision or not not uh, forward it on to uh, the city council. Um, just as a sidebar note, because it, to me it has a level of relevance, some may think it does not. Um, the, the two gentlemen that created this particular issue that we're dealing with here tonight, or, or brought it was forward. It, was this discussed in the meeting? Yes, the meeting that we talked about. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The, I made them aware that uh, uh, Shane and Cody breached their contract and were no longer paying uh, their dues and had been suspended from the natatorium. And the comment that was made, well, let's assume they didn't because this situation could apply to somebody who uh, is paying their, their dues in, in membership. So uh, that was part of the conversation. So whether it's these two people or any two people, uh, it, it doesn't change uh, the, the topic. So we have the thanks no, for the update. And thank you everybody for your patience. Now the three members of council that participated in those uh, discussions are here tonight. So at this point, if any three of you would like to, um, I guess just make any comments, but limited specifically just to those meetings and the thoughts of those meetings so I can kind of keep this on a chronological track, I don't want to get too far out there, and I want to keep it focused. Uh, are there any comments from any of those three council people? Uh, Diana, go ahead, and then Harry, I saw your hand as well. Sure, that's fine. Diana Colvecchio from City Council Ward 5, and I uh, begin my comments with first saying that when last we all met and I was here at your meeting, and I, I did say that night that I would be taking the issue up by asking how to appoint an ad hoc committee. Uh, when I left here that night, I ended up on a completely different journey, and I think I owe all of you folks who volunteer your time and efforts on this board an apology. I think I might have offended some of you by if you by saying that council could very well usurp your authority, and if you took offense to that, I understand. And I do want to let you all know that um, I heard you, and I listened to that, and I then later went in a different direction in part because of that. So where I ended up was um, after meeting with you all, uh, and I had to leave that night quickly so I couldn't even stick around and talk to you. I, I can tonight if I need to, if you have questions, but afterward, uh, I received uh, an email from Pastor Christian Coons, who is also here this evening, inviting me to sit down and chat with him about the issue. And so I spent two hours with him at Starbucks on Green Road, and we spent uh, time chit-chatting back and forth about this issue. We ran the gamut. We talked about gay marriage. We talked about couples who just live each other, with each other. We talked about the issue of the auditorium and specifics, and we ultimately came full circle in determining that we both believe that there might have been some confusion amongst this board when we left that night, that um, for some of you perhaps, you thought you were gonna revisit this issue, that some seemed to say amongst you that you would be willing to revisit this issue. So, in fact, Pastor Chris asked me to not form the ad hoc committee and to kind of take a couple steps back and uh, see if this was something that should come back to Parking Rec Board. So, talking to Bill Lohan, as you know, yes, we decided for work session that there was a better way to go. In between then, I had already asked council for volunteers for an ad hoc committee. And Carrie Snyder volunteered, she's here tonight, and Carrie Mader volunteered. I have to tell you, Carrie Mader volunteered, uh, but he told me in his email that I probably wasn't going to want to hear what he had to say, 
And I wrote back to him right away and said, I absolutely want to hear what you have to say. I appreciate your willingness to serve. And in fact, uh, it was very valuable to have various opinions in the room at the same time in the work session. Terry um, can speak to his opinion, but we did have a variety of, of backgrounds and opinions. Um, so, having said that, when we uh, begin, began our work sessions, and Bill Wilhelm gave you the rundown, I'm not going to repeat what he said. I will supplement with a few of our own insights, with my insights. Um, the first work session, the three and a half hour work session, we left there pretty exhausted naturally, but uh, yeah, we gained a lot of information. It was highly educational. I learned more about the rate structure than I probably ever cared to know. But one of the things that came out of that uh, learning process was this, that there are a lot of inconsistencies built in to the current rate structure. You could call them unfair, whatever. We're not here to say or judge that, but we did know that there were some inconsistencies. Uh, for example, Silver Lake residents receive a better rate than Cuyahoga Falls residents. That's by contract, because when Cuyahoga Falls EMS started to run the Silver Lake, we agreed that we would extend that discount to those residents. Another inconsistency. There is a corporate rate that we give to businesses outside of Cuyahoga Falls and their employees. Those employees work and live outside of Cuyahoga Falls. They pay less than Cuyahoga Falls residents to join the NAP. You need to know that. Another inconsistency is that a senior who pays a lower rate could very well be married to someone who's 20 years old. We joked about that, but it's possible. That 20-year-old enjoys the senior rate. Okay, and then I made this point too about our rate policy. Um, I'm not gonna say that everybody felt the way about it, I did. But I certainly felt that one of the inconsistencies was that a heterosexual couple who lives in this city and has lived here for 20 years paid our utilities, paid our real estate taxes. And remember, the, the NATIC firm does not pay utilities, so in that sense, it is subsidized by the great payers. That, set, that same heterosexual couple who's lived here for 20 years paying utilities and taxes does not get the discount. But if Joe and Susie Smith get married in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, move to Cuyahoga Falls the next day, they get the discount immediately. I thought that that was unfair and inconsistent. So we looked at those rates and we concluded um, that basically, like Bill Logan said, even though there were inconsistencies, it had been in place for a long time, there was a lot of history with it, and to throw the whole system out would be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. One of the um, uh, revenue shortfall figures, 49,000, that we talked about that night, we kind of just reserved that in our back pocket at the moment. We weren't sure how to deal with that, but I immediately started keying in on thinking that was a better way to go about resolving this problem rather than throwing out the whole rate policy, was finding a way where we could transform the rate policy so that our revenue loss would just be a $49,000 revenue loss. So then we met again and we invited the law director to come in because we felt that it was time to bring in somebody who had the knowledge of the Constitution and who had written our legal opinion. And it was very valuable to have him there. And what we were able to conclude by having him in the room was that, in fact, our rate policy is discriminatory. The NAP. Simultaneously in this discussion, we started talking about waterworks. And we pulled out the rate policy on that, that facility. And we learned that that rate policy is not discriminatory. Because, in fact, it is here for one adult, two adult, one kid, two kids. So then we realized we have two competing policies, not just in the city, but in the same department. And we started thinking about this in terms of, okay, maybe this should be reconciled, and maybe now's the time to do that. And if we can do that, then we can find common ground and move forward in doing that. So um, I did make the recommendations that Bill Lohan gave you. I recommend it to the board that he come back to you and ask you to reconcile the two policies that you um, understand that one is discriminatory and one is not. That you also find a way to come up with a 40, projected $49,000 revenue shortfall. On that, I would say to you that the $49,000 shortfall is a projection and it is a worst case scenario. 
It is also not a, a, a shortfall that we would realize in 2012. Once you would reconcile these policies, you have to understand that the, the mandatorium annual memberships expire on a rolling basis throughout the year. They're not often expired in 2012. So this $49,000 would be spread out. And um, as an aside, we also don't know that by reconciling the policies, how many people might decide that the city of Chicago Falls has stepped up and done the right thing and decide to join the net. So we're not sure whether the 49,000 will disappear completely. That's also a possibility. I, had, I did make the recommendation that we pay down that debt. And um, basically, so you all know, every year the net attorney does pay down about a million dollars for the debt. And it's due to do, uh, do that, I think, for another seven years. So that's a possibility in how we could come up with the shortfall. So I guess I'll um, just kind of bring it full circle by saying that uh, you, you can do this. It is your, your purview to do it. I would ask you to keep an open mind and do your own due diligence. I myself had to sort of backpedal off of my original assessments and verbal statements. Um, I had to swallow a few bits of ego in the process. Some of you made statements at the last meeting and made some maybe rushed to judgment statements. And I'm hoping that you will be willing to back off of those and listen to all of the voices in the room. Listen to the far right, the far left. Think about what's best for the city, what's going to put the city in the best light as we move forward, and uh, basically come up with a conclusion that you feel means that you have also done your due diligence. I invite you to go in and meet with Bill, meet with Ed, uh, look at the spreadsheets. There are spreadsheets that, that detail and conclude that it's a $49,000 revenue shortfall. There's probably a debt amortization schedule that he can show you on the debt repayment. Um, you can spend your time, as we did, learning about the current rate structure and the many inconsistencies in it. And I'm hopeful that at the end of that process, you'll come back here and, and, and come to the same conclusions that, we, that I have come to. You might hear a different opinion from somebody else who's here tonight, but I think that uh, basically the, the time has come to put this issue behind us and to move this thing forward in the best way possible. This is on the verge of breaking ground at Portage Crossing. We learned this today in the press release. I think it would be a great time to, to show that we are a progressive city, but a welcoming city, all the same. And we want to make sure that going forward, that the people, not just who live here, but the people who live outside of the city as well, you are a city as welcoming. Thank you for the time. Thank you, uh, Diane. Let me just hold that down. Go ahead, Terry. I'm Terry Mayer, the Board of Econ Committee. Diane was very accurate on what transpired during those sessions. Uh, I was probably a very strong voice coming at it from a strategic perspective, and I may sound like I'm oversimplifying this to you folks. However, as probably most of you know, we on council received multitudes of uh, form letter emails over a, one weekend in particular and uh, stressing that the we on city council should change our policies for the mandatory rate structure. And these emails came from all over the world. Uh, got one from Kenya, Africa. And uh, so I, I felt like this was getting a little bit out of hand. The part that's bothered me on this issue is uh, the following Monday, uh, which was our council meeting night, after receiving all these, there were some council people at the end of our council meeting, and I stressed that it was at the end of the council meeting, the public did not apply them, and so on. We're all comparing notes, basically, over the fact that we've received all these emails that weekend. And uh, due to that, uh, there was some media present, and uh, that's fine. Uh, and the question popped up on whether we on city council were going to take this subject matter up. I felt personally that that was out of line only due to the fact that I felt that was a situation where our council people that were in that discussion kind of felt like they had to address that 
and the comment was made that they would be seeking our city law director's legal opinion on the issue. My feeling is, if that hadn't taken place, we wouldn't be here tonight because the original ruling by the natatorium from the two individuals requesting uh, the discount rate was quoted on the fact that our natatorium rules were based and relied on the fact that the state constitution only looked at marriage between one man and one woman as a basis. That's been my whole focus on that from my perspective during this whole process. Uh, I'd have to ask, are either of those gentlemen here that asked for that rate? The only reason I'm asking that question is I do want it on the record that I want to honor and respect the gentleman's service to our country. And uh, I too am a former vet from the Vietnam era. And in that process, when you go into the military, uh, you take an oath of office that you uh, are sworn in when you're admitted into the military service. And in that oath of office, it declares that I honor and respect our country's constitution and defend it against foreign powers and also internal uh, enemies that would go counter to what our constitution stands for. I take that oath even to this day, even though I'm not an active Marine, but some of us still have the feeling that because we are one, we still are one. Also, when I came on the city council, when we were elected to office, we take basically the same oath only in respect to the state of Ohio in honoring our state's constitution and defending it. And I stated in one of our meetings that night that I would defend our Constitution and as it stands with my last breath if necessary. That to me is what this issue is all about. I understand Diane's thrust on coming to come uh, to eliminate the marriage verbiage. My problem with that is we'd be skirting the way it is worded as it stands now. And to me that skirting of it would be challenging our state's Constitution that we as office holders have sworn to uphold. I feel that even though this panel is voluntary, that we're not elected to these seats, and I respect that, I really appreciate your service and being willing to serve our city that way. Now you're introduced to the ordinance that we start getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, I believe that we as the elected officials and our administration that I don't care what committee exists out there within our city comes under that same authority and being subject to the state of Ohio's constitution. My feeling on this is that we try to walk around this with some other verbiage to do away with the issue. We're really talking about not paying attention to the elephant that's in the room. Uh, our natatorium is a central family uh, supporting facility in our community. Those of us that have joined here, and our city has the reputation, a solid reputation <coughs> of being family oriented. The family structure is defined as the smallest social unit in a civilized community, with parents defined as the leaders of that smallest unit. Quite frankly, it's my opinion that the request for this discounted rate has nothing to do with money. Our country, our nation, and now our community has been under attack for years in trying to redefine what family is and to the detriment of our family structure. And from that standpoint alone, uh, I believe it would be unfair to be another victim from a small percentage of the population, not only in our country, but in our community. I did pull up some research numbers, which I shared at our meetings, that nationally speaking, according to the stats that came forth, there's only a 3.6 to 3.8 percentage nationally of the group that identifies and safe with alternative family lifestyles. The state of Ohio is just a 4%. 
I feel that we have a very small percentage of population that is the driver of why we're here tonight, and they aren't even here tonight to stand up for the reason, although maybe there are some here that would. Don't know that yet. But my point being, there is an attack on families. Mm -hmm. And if we allow this to take hold in our community and subject ourselves to that happening and caving into it, then shame on us as civic leaders in the position that we hold in defending and honoring our country's constitution. And the final thing I will say to all of that is there's a movement to try to redefine and tear down the traditional and, dare I say, biblical definition of what a family is. Another added point to this is the Parks and Rec Board has operated, if I recall correctly, and Mr. Lowe, I can straighten out if my number's wrong, for approximately 58 years without the city council coming across that endeavor and imposing itself. I shared at the meeting, the city council were to take this on and override this uh, entity's job, then why don't we just take over all the other committees that exist in the city and take it upon city council to uh, help overpower all the other committees, which would just basically cancel all of them out. This body has done a fantastic job for 58 years, even though obviously none of these people served that long on the committee. <laughs> Uh, unless Mr. Sebastian's been around that long. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my stand on this strictly has to do with the departure from our city and our Parks and Rec Board deviating from what has been accepted as adhering to our state's constitution. And I think if we go and divert from that, I would challenge our leadership in the fact that if they're going to take that step, they're cutting across and breaking possibly our state's constitution laws. Mr. Janus did share at that meeting that he felt, his, his final, one of his final comments was that he felt our safest position at the city of Cairo Falls was to stand on our state's constitution and that would alleviate basically lawsuits and whatever. As Mr. Lohan just shared, there is a movement in our state where state constitution, just gonna, there's, there's folks out there that have petitions out there to get this on the ballot to override and change the constitution. And if that is to take place and they get the votes in so doing, then obviously we're gonna have to adjust as the city to accommodate so what would be our constitutional law. And that's basically where I'm coming from. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Just, uh, and I don't know whether I misheard Diana or not, no one receives a lower rate than the resident of Cow Falls. Cow Falls resident receives the absolute lowest rate of anybody. Silver Lake receives the same rate as Cow Falls, and that was because of a contract signed uh, for EMS services, and there is an ordinance that says if we ever make less money out of Silver Lake than we were making at the time the ordinance was signed, that the deficit would be made up out of the contract that was signed with Silver Lake. So I don't know whether I, I misheard you or not, Diana, but no one receives a lower rate than the resident of, of Cub Falls. Some receive the same rate, but no one receives a lower rate. And, and then the other thing on the, on the policy, uh, if I might extend one, uh, the, the natatorium uh, policy of race structure is discriminatory but totally legal. Uh, and the one at the waterworks is non-discriminatory and totally legal. So uh, I didn't want it to be left that it, the fact of uh, discrimination did not imply the other <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to try to get my arms around this a little bit. So, uh, were there any other members of those, any other participants in those meetings within the last month that wanted to make a comment? Okay, so, there's not going to be any, well, I'll speak for myself. I'm not going to make any motions tonight. 
I appreciate the comments that we heard thus far from everybody, and I respect everybody's point of view, and I hope everybody does here as well. Um, I think Diana's charge, and, and I'm going to uh, accept that charge and, uh, and ask to ensure that the, the rest of my peers uh, with me on this board heard that, that we'll review this issue. Um, some of us know the race structure probably better than those that were in those meetings because we've dealt with it, but I don't know that we know it 100 percent inside now. So I would ask the members uh, here to have some meetings with um, Ed and or Bill, um, get extremely familiar with our rate structure, uh, take what we've heard, and I'm not necessarily done hearing everything, but take what we've heard and be prepared to make a decision at next month's meeting. Um, I felt some eyes roll. I didn't have to look out there because here we go another 30 days or meeting for every 30 days. And I don't want to <coughs> make it seem like we're just putting this off and kicking the can down the road. But I, I appreciate what Diana said and I, I don't think we want to rush it either. So we've come this far. It's not necessarily a timely issue that has to be done by a certain date. So let's do that. Let's look at all that stuff. Let's have those meetings everybody with uh, the, the farm staff, get to know the rate structure, and we'll make a decision at next month's meeting and then we'll move forward. Um, there may be a change, there may not be a change, and, and we'll find out at that point. I think what where we're at, and I, and I want it, this has turned into um, some emotional, anxious times, and, and I, I, I felt the anxiety a little bit in the room when I walked in, um, uh, and, and I don't want it to be like that. Um, we, we have some strong views, and that's fine. I think that that's good. And we each have our own beliefs, and, uh, and that's okay, too. Um, I guess what I want to try to say, and, and correct a little bit of some things I've heard during this process, the Constitution is the Constitution. No one in this room is going to change it tonight. We can't do it. It has to be voted on by the people. And uh, Terry, or Mr. Mayor, Councilman Mayor, is correct when he states that the Constitution currently says marriage is defined by uh, union between a man and a woman, period. That's what it is. Whether you, whether you agree with that or don't agree with it, that's what it says. And this board is not going to change it. I'm not attempting to change that. And um, I also want to say, though, if we remove that discount structure in our rate structure now, uh, and we, we remove that definition referring to the Constitution, that is not illegal. It's not getting around the Constitution. It's not changing it, it's not altering it, it's not attacking it, it's just removing it from the equation so this this issue is just no longer there. And as um, Mrs. Colvett you have stated, we, we don't refer to it in the waterworks rate structure. And it's fine. It's not illegal. And I would submit if there's such a problem with removing it from the natatorium structure thinking that that's illegal, why are we not being pressured to put that into the waterworks rate structure. It's, it, that's hard to reconcile. I think Mrs. Colavecchio is right. We have two rate structures. They don't compete with each other necessarily, but they, they're vastly different. And this has turned into um, kind of pitting one group against the other, which I, I'm not comfortable with. I don't think anybody's comfortable with that. And that's what I'm trying to take away so that that sort of thing doesn't happen or continue to happen. Having said that, I think when Bill ended his comments, next month we'll have maybe three scenarios to look at. We leave it the same. That's one. That's basically what this body decided to do uh, at the last week, leave the rate structure the same. We change it to where instead of we have a single rate, and a couple's rate, where that is referring to the Constitution definition, that we change that to 
one adult, two adults, period. Similar to what we do at Waterworks. That creates a $49,000 problem. And we would, if we were going to make that change, we'd have to be confident that we could cut our expenses without hindering service to our current uh, customers, uh, not increasing a burden on our taxpayers. Nobody here wants to do that. Um, what did I cover so far? Staying the same, making the change. I've been doing things like this for a long time, but even once in a while I, I forget what I'm talking about. Um, I guess that that would be it then. So we need to do that. We need to decide if we want to make that sort of change, have some conversations between now and then. Next meeting, I promise, I know I'm on tape everywhere. People saw I'm being recorded. I, we were on YouTube before, so it's a, it's a whole new generation. <laughs> but um, if I we, will, we will uh, do our best. Well, we're going to make it, we're going to come to a conclusion next May. I won't not be here. You won't be here? I, I, I have a, a... We'll do it without you. Okay. Um, but we will have our meeting and we'll, we'll come to some uh, resolution and then we're going to move forward. And not everybody's going to be happy with what we do because we can't, we can't uh, do everything. We're going to have to do one thing or the other thing. Now, again, there's not going to be any motions tonight. We're not going to make any decisions to change tonight. But I appreciate the time everyone's taken to come here. If anyone would like to make any comments, I, I would ask that you, I gave some latitude to our uh, council people because they're in those meetings. I would ask that you keep your comments limited, um, but I don't want you to leave here tonight uh, feeling maybe you came and you wanted to say something, you weren't able to do that. Uh, if you can come next um, month, I will certainly allow comments before we vote. I, I just think that that's the right thing to do. So um, I'll certainly do that. But is there anyone, and I would like you to address the board, and I don't want uh, this to get into where uh, uh, certain groups are talking at or to other groups in the audience. Keep it positive. Um, we'll respect everyone's views, but direct it towards me. Um, is there anyone that wants to make any comment? Sir? Do you have a written mission statement? Do we have a written mission statement? Yes. We have, um, the park board is created by the uh, Ohio Revised Code, and then the Cogba Falls has a charter, and the uh, Park and Recreation Board, it may not be a mission statement in and of, of what maybe you're thinking, but we do have paragraphs that state what this park body um, mission is insofar as what our duties are. But there are bylaws. Well, okay. Because oftentimes an organization has a, a, a mission statement and I was wondering, the natatorium being established I think in the early 70s um, probably had a mission statement and what that mission statement says <coughs> is it in is it in conflict or agreement with the discussion that's going on now? I can tell you it's not in conflict. Okay. Certainly not. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, anyone making a comment, she didn't ask this because she knows who our council members are, but we have to keep minutes because of those bylaws that we're talking about, and we need your... Uh, name uh, and address for those uh, minutes. Sir, do you mind giving your name and address? I'm Joe Mumper. I'm sorry? Joe Mumper. You need your address. Name's fine. Okay. Any other comments? Chris McCombs, Pastor Brown Baptist Church, 3508 Staff Board. Um, I have a couple questions before comment, Tim. Sure. Um, one, why is marriage considered discriminatory? I think that needs to be answered if that is considered discriminatory. Okay. When does marriage become discriminatory? Do you want? Go ahead. All right. Two. You're counting on you, the you're, you're, you're asking. You're asking. Why hasn't anybody asked you to change waterworks? 
I'm going to now ask you, why don't you consider changing Waterworks? All right, and then Mr. Lohan at Waterworks. Um, could a same-sex couple married in Washington, D.C., or a domestic partnership or civil union in some of the other, what, seven territories or six territories now in our land, um, could they get that rate at Waterworks? I, I have had you get to go last, so I'm trying to remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say, but those three questions are pretty pertinent before I would say something. That's fine. Um, the first question was, when did marriage become discriminatory? Uh, it did not. And I guess just to, and I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm far funnier than all the attorneys that I know. But, um, the, uh, no offense, Diane, but she is an attorney. I have to watch out when you get... I'll get sued for some. Uh, that wasn't the comments from our law director that marriage was discriminatory. I think his comments were that the rape, the rape policy as it stands now, there's different carve outs. It wasn't that it could not have been specific just to that. Um, we have different carve outs for, um, I don't want to say military, but that is one, and you get a discount for military, you get a discount. Uh, as a resident, non-resident, you get a discount. Corporate, uh, if my company is a member of the NAP, my employees get a, a discount. Whether they're residents or not, they can still get a favorable discount. So I do not want to speak for our law director tonight. So please uh, make that uh, comment right at the beginning. But I think that that's what he meant with respect to discriminatory, that there's um, a lot of different carve-outs, not saying anything about marriage being discriminatory. The second question was, will we introduce a rate change at Waterworks? Um, I can't speak for the body on that, um, but if you're the law consistent was what I'm saying. Why not just go with the NAS policy? I mean, it could go either way is what I'm saying. It could go either way, but right now it's two different ways. So. I see what you're saying. I'm saying we should reconcile this maybe going more towards the math. You're saying we can reconcile it going more towards this way. I understand your point. Remember your question. I do. Uh, <laughs> what would happen at the Waterworks? Uh, it, it, and uh, again, I will defer. I'm not an attorney, so I'm going to try to answer this uh, on how we have traditionally done it since 1964. Believe me, we've been doing a lot of homework on this on this topic. Uh, waterworks, not not the physical facility that we know it today, but it goes back to 1964. This particular definition started in 1964. So let me suggest in 1964, thought processes were probably different than they are in 2012. Uh, so it was something that has just carried forward uh, since 1964, uh, which is why Waterworks uh, is what it is. It, it's seasonal, and, and here's where uh, I don't know is going to be the end of the answer. If we look at pragmatics, we would have been forced and have since 1964 the same scenario as we do with an auditorium. So from a practical standpoint, in my research, talking to my chief historian, uh, we would have, in fact, applied it the same way as we did the auditorium. However, if you read the words, one could probably challenge legally that what we're enforcing is not what it says. So uh, at minimum, we'll probably have to clean that up one way or the other. So if, if you read, and I will read here for a moment. Uh, first of all, it talks to the term uh, family passes. And, and what our thought was as an organization, going back to those days, I don't mean this to be sexist, but I, I'm old enough to remember, a stay-at-home mom, uh, and, and dad going off to work. So our, our passes tended to be sold to the parent who was staying home with their children as opposed to, uh, to uh, the, the dad may come on a weekend but wouldn't have gotten pass. So pragmatically, that was the way the pass structure was set. And it says a family is identified as parent or parents in any unmarried children under the age of 21. What it does not define is those parents need to be married. And that would probably be the legal issue we would get into if that were to come up. But pragmatically, we've applied it one way, but the words don't necessarily legally support the way we've applied it. Thanks, Bill.
Perhaps she said you wanted to make a few comments. I'd ask you if you could. Got one minute. <laughs> One page? One page. No, seven page. Seven parts. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to personally thank the Park and Recreation Board for providing, uh, I'm talking to the park, not just the board and those that work. Uh, we have excellent facilities, excellent programs, and uh, our city is a great place to live. And I think part of it is because of our park and recreation. I know that personally, um, the golf course, the parks, the waterworks, which we do every summer, and uh, the natatorium of all has been a part of it sometime in my nine years here in the city. And uh, I, we're blessed to have this. We really are, so thank you all. Um, I think we need to be mindful of how we arrived here and what this is connected with. That's the problem. Okay, so however we can disconnect that, that's an important thing for people of faith and people that have strong values on marriage. So you guys have a tough job because of how it was brought forward. A uh, social agenda has been pushed upon our city. And, and there's no doubt about it. I think it goes well beyond the rate structure change. This was not about rates. This is not about rates. This is a social agenda. Um, it's throughout our land. We need to acknowledge that. I don't know what's going to end up happening at the Supreme Court. I don't know what's going to happen if this goes to Ohio. I have no idea. My views will never change because my views are based on what I believe in God and what God's word says. Now, I know not everybody believes that. I'm okay with that. I'm really okay with that, but I'm not going to be silent about it. Um, I want to say that the last meeting, I, I said this was not personal. I still mean that. It's not personal. This remains a matter of principle based on morals and values and historic precedents. Please hear that, and I'll talk to any of you about that. If you want me to go through a history lesson, I'll bring our KSU professor in here that's a history professor, and she'll tell you all you want to know about homosexual relationships throughout history. So... Is historic precedent is marriage has never been connected with sexual preference, period. Um, fiscal responsibility. If we do do, as Mrs. Calabacchio says, we've got to make a decision. Is it wise to take that $49,000 of taxpayer dollars or membership fees and not use it for the debt? I know it's a minor number in the big scope of the numbers we're dealing with. I know $49,000 is a lot for me, but the that's not a lot. Um, but is that fiscally wise? Is that what would be best? Um, also, there's religious views on this, and there's even le legal standing right now, which I thank God for, because if not, I would just be deploring you for a moral basis. Uh, the vast majority of people are defending marriage, I believe, have been very compassionate that I know, and have been very, tried to be positive about this. Um, no one that I know is trying to deny any person the right to choose a lifestyle they're choosing, they're not telling anyone how they can or cannot live, are we imposing, this is an important point to me, we are not imposing our values upon anyone, but simply defending the values that already exist. I want you to hear that. We are not imposing our values upon anyone. We're simply defending the ones that currently exist. Therefore, I believe it is a social agenda to redefine marriage, even by some that are civil leaders in our community right now, that have embraced this philosophy in this way of thinking that's very concerning to me because they then are trying to impose their values on them. Uh, so what I'm saying for me personally is that God's way of marriage is best. He says it's between one man and one woman. Our Constitution says the same. The Bible says it this way, two flesh shall become one. Uh, nor is anyone saying that there are any problems with marriage. I want to say this because a lot of on the patch and other things, the base has been going on in our community. No one's saying there are not other problems with marriage. Marriage in America is messed up. All right, all of us have fallen. I'm not here to cast any blame. Divorces happen. Abuse happens. A lot of different things happen that don't make that aren't right in marriage. That does not change God's intent, God's purpose, God's meaning, or definition of marriage. Nor should our failures in marriage cause us to condone something that's less than God's best. I still believe a, a, there's a great majority in our nation that still are kind of like, as our president said, those God and gun people. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of NASCAR Christians. And then there's a lot of Christians that go to church every Sunday and are faithful and they do all that stuff. Right? There's a lot of people. Some statistics that I read up to some 90% says some faith in God. So we're dealing with a huge issue. Now, they may not have the same beliefs we have. They may not believe in the Bible the way I do. But it's a serious issue that we, we need to discuss civilly in public form. 
without getting upset at each other. And I think Diana, because guess what? There was a couple of times I wanted to smash my coffee cup talking to you. I'm sure you did too back, although you didn't drink coffee. But we worked through things. That's a good thing to do. So I, I do I do agree that, although I do want this to be over with, I hope. Tonight I hope we will embrace God's best for our community. Um, I wanted to give that background. I want to say one other thing of a background before I get to specifics. Sadly, we live in a day and time which moral relativism prevails, or is starting to gain momentum in our culture. If you don't know what that is, it's a philosophy that claims that morality is in the eye of the beholder. Sadly, we've got a generation being raised with that type of teaching. When I grew up, Ten Commandments were still on the wall. We could still pray. Teachers could still say, talk about God. And if you brought it up in class, they would talk about it. Man, has our society changed. We're not going to fix that here today, but I'm saying what's happening right here in our city is a product of that. And I pray and hope if this gets out on YouTube or whatever, that people hear these words, we have got to turn this around. The moral decay, the ethical values that have gone astray, the erosion of our values, it's just too much. And also, this is a problem that's of great concern to my children that I'm raising on the same standards that I have, is that if a person says something's right or wrong, they're now considered intolerant because of moral relativity. No one can no longer say, that is right, and that is wrong. Whenever you do that, you're a bigot. You're intolerant. You're a hater. And by the way, I've had an email like that for all the statements I've said. I've received more support, thank you, Jesus. But I've also received problems like that. So I believe, as many do in this room, that we should pursue, <laughs> preserve, and protect the best things for our community. Religion, but of religion, was in our Constitution for a reason. We should be able to express it and have it part of the public forum, even part of influencing public policy. Why are we ashamed of that? The simple gospel message is that Jesus saves. He loves us enough that He saved us from our sin, and people like to hear that God loves them. We say that all the time. Even people that don't have a strong faith will say, God loves you. And he does. That is a true statement. And many people write me on this topic. Chris, doesn't God just love everybody? Isn't everybody just a child of God? What we do is we confuse God's love and we miss the point of why Jesus died. He died because we're sinners, every single one of us in this room. You may not like that. You may reject that. You may reject what he did. But those of faith believe that Jesus Christ, in the aftermath of Easter last weekend, believe that he really died for our sins. And to anyone who embraces his love, we are forgiven of our sin. And when that happens, God doesn't call us to stay in our sin, but to, guess what, be free from the consequences of eternal sin, and also free from the lifestyle of being enslaved to sin here on this earth. That is the gospel. Why is this that big? Because God says marriage is best. And I believe that we need to make sure that that's known to our public. You said one page. I know. Ah. What is that page? You must write smaller than I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I got some people to yield time to me. Tim, do I need to do that? Well, let me, let me do this, Pastor. I, I appreciate what you're saying. I, I truly do. I just I want to make sure my initial goal was to make sure we had a, a kind of a, a time thing. So if anyone had to, to leave, that they could, could do that. Um, okay. Can you pause? Does anybody else want to make any comments? I, okay, I, uh, in the back, I saw the hand go up first. Uh, good evening. Thank you to the Parks and Rec Board for your service to the community and for taking time to listen to folks. My name is Sandra Kurt. That's spelled K-U-R-T. I live in Akron. Um, I would just like to point out that this is not a religious debate. This is public policy. The Constitution, while the state constitution defines marriage as between a man and a woman, the U.S. Constitution says that there is a separation of church and state. There are many religions that do not define marriage in the same way that has been defined here by one particular pastor. Um, we need to recognize, it was also mentioned that this is only a small percentage of people that are even looking for this. But again, in our country, it doesn't matter if there's a lot of people or a few people. We're all supposed to be, if we pay our taxes, we obey the laws, 
We're all supposed to be recognized as citizens, regardless of what religion we believe, or who we love, or anything else. And I ask that Parks and Rec Board recognize that, that it doesn't matter if it's a lot of people or a few people, it doesn't matter if they're loud or if they're quiet, we have to recognize everybody. That's what the Constitution says. And I hope that those that defend the Constitution believe that as well. Um, regarding fiscal responsibility, if you really wanted to make sure that you had plenty of money, you would eliminate the marriage rate altogether and say everybody pays single rates. You would make a lot more money that way. So if that's your, your biggest concern, you have that option. I just want to thank you again for your time. Thank you for listening and good luck. Thank you. I see uh, in the middle, I see you too. Thanks. Go ahead, Susan. Oh, sure. Hi, well, Susan Howard. Um, Grant Street, can I have a call? Thank you for the time. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to make a comment on separation of church and state that has been misquoted for about 50 years, and it started in the federal courts. And that is a misquote from one of Thomas Jefferson's letters. What the Constitution intended was to keep us from having a national religion like the Church of England. So um, the separation was to keep government from establishing one denomination of Christians over another, like some of the colonies made the mistake of doing. Um, so that quote is not appropriate here. We should not be afraid as park member boards or council members or even the city of Cuyahoga Falls could decide to have a cross as part of their city seal like Stowe did, which is really a freedom that we have under the First Amendment. So I'd just like to clarify that. Um, and also I'd like to know the term discriminatory. If the natatorium rate policies are discriminatory is not really the issue here. That's a whole separate you guys can deal with that if that's the fact, but that is like a smoke screen to get us off of what the issue really is. So that's just my okay. opinion. Thank you. And let me, I'm going to go here and here and I see you in the back. Um, <laughs> let me just state, and I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to be real careful quoting our law director. I was not in those meetings. Um, Ms. Kolbeck, you brought up that um, Mr. Janice had stated that. I would say from this point forward, let's not discuss that. Um, if anyone wants to call our law director directly to ask him specifically what he meant by that insofar as our rate policy, I would be more comfortable doing that. That could be um, a good term, not a bad term. Yeah, because yeah. stating you thought it was a smoke screen, I don't think our law director is saying anything that's a smoke screen. No, no, I mean, job. I mean it's, bringing that up as an I'm, issue here. Right. Yeah. It, it's his job to um, help us with what the law is. That That's his charge. So let's uh, not bring that up anymore. Okay. Go ahead, sir. My name is Richard Magrum. Uh, it's been brought up that this is not a religious issue. Uh, divorcing religion from public policy is simply impossible and is not supported by the evidence. Natatorium was closed last Sunday for Easter. Cobb Falls Public Schools were closed for Good Friday. All city services are closed on Easter Day, on Christmas Day. You can't divorce religion from public policy. It's not possible. It's not supported by the evidence. I don't know why in these economic times you would consider reducing any payoff of any debt. For what? There's no reason to do that. It's just simply irresponsible. Lastly, this is not about rate structure. It's about a social agenda. My rights are currently in place. You're talking about changing them. Whether it's legal or not, you are going to take away my rights if you make a change. You're going to force a social agenda on me and everybody else who has a right to have marriage defined as it is in the Ohio Constitution. If you change the words in the Natatorian policy, you are changing the definition of marriage as it currently exists. Let's not make any mistake about that. Some of you have made public statements that call into question your fitness to debate this issue, and I think you know who I'm talking about. That's all I have to say. Thank you.
say that you had stated that it's not illegal to take out the definition of marriage out of the me? yeah rate structure for that, the what? natatorium. You okay. stated it's not illegal, and you're right, it's not illegal, but it is clearly a way of covering over the issue. You said it's not, but it is. It is a very clear way to cover over what the issue is. There are some strong feelings and some strong opinions. While you know we're all entitled to our feelings and our opinions and stuff, we all do need to abide by the Ohio Constitution law because we're all bound by that. And again, I say, as I said at the last meeting, that if we can't depend on our civil leaders and such to abide by the Ohio Constitution, then don't ask your citizens to abide by the laws you set in place. Your name for the record, ma'am. Shannon Daringer, and I live on 12th Street in Cuyahoga Falls, and yes, I use the NAT and I use the Waterworks. Uh, my name is Roy Sutherland. I've been a um, resident here in Kaiser Falls for about 33 years. Um, again, I think it's a matter of the law and the law of the state of Ohio. I guess defines marriage as between a man mm -hmm. and a woman. But I think we can go even higher than that. Is it the law in our country, our federal law, <coughs> the, law the Defense of Marriage Act, that we defines marriage between a man woman and I guess I would go higher than that I mean I think here we can at least go to federal law but I go a little higher than that to God's law and uh, God's law says that uh, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh if marriage is a human institution then men have every right to change it. You can make marriage whatever you want between two men, two women, between a man and his dog, a woman and her cat. You can make it anything you want if it's a human institution. But if it's a God-given institution, and it was God's first institution that he gave here on earth, we have no right to change that. And therefore, I think that has everything to do. We, we have law as president in the state of Ohio, at the federal level, and at the divine level. And I think that should guide this committee's decision in what you do. Because you're representing, you're representatives of that law.
extra constitutional rights to them by the actions of this board. Um, if these two were denied membership because they were gay, uh, I am probably one of the most conservative members of my community, my church. I have a huge libertarian streak as well, but I would be down there right away standing up for their rights because they were being denied the right to become a member just because they're gay. Yeah, yeah they're being given extra constitutional rights because they're gay. Now that's trampling upon my rights. I appreciate your comments. I just want to say that no one was denied membership whatsoever. Um, uh, those two gentlemen. Okay. They do? Okay. I, I, I heard something different. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Appreciate it. Sir? Uh, by one hour, I'm going to take uh, 50 minutes and Chris. No, I'm going to make this real quick. Okay. The Constitution, Thomas Jefferson said, this is a great document, but it's only for a more people. You can always find ways around the Constitution or chip at it, chip at it. I watch the law and order against the law, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but they said that you could put a ham sandwich in jail, jail a good lawyer. In other words, you can get around the law. You can say, this is not constitutional. You can just do this, change a little word here, change a little word there, but you've chipped away at the Constitution. Incidentally, I'm a vet. And I also, when I join, I tip it. Oh. I'm for the Constitution. And I'm not for taking an in run. We're not a football team. Thanks, sir. You're, you're up, up, name for the record. David Jimmerman. Thank you, sir. Not Justin. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to sing if you want. We probably, we probably could use a reprieve. Everybody doing okay out there? Absolutely. Okay. Hi, sir, in the front. I am Brian Penta, and I would just like to say that um, we should just um, just have gays here. Um, like, the churches cannot tell us what to do. The gays should be allowed here no matter what, because nothing's wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it, actually. And if they're here, yeah, they're, like, there's nothing wrong with them. The Constitution's old. It's outdated. Uh, it, we need we need to respect everybody. We need gays. We need everybody. It doesn't matter what they are. And, yeah. We we recently saw the bully play at the high school where they're teaching tolerance, and it's a big thing. And we have kept our family abreast about what's going on because we, it's a learning experience, and to be tolerant of other people and not have religion um, constantly thrown in our faces and we're teaching our children to be tolerant of homosexuals, heterosexuals, any people. And so it was very brave of him to speak up here, but it also is important for him to be active in his community. So just to respect our opinion. Thank you. Uh, Mike Penta, um, I just want to say, you know, we had that bullying play at, at uh, the high school, and you know, that came about in part because of the protests that I'm sure all of you heard about at Bullock over bullying. And, you know, you send a very strong message to these kids um, of hatred and bigotry when you are talking about denying a, a, a simple discount. And you wonder why kids come into our schools and they're bullying other kids. Sometimes the community teaches them that. Mm -hmm. And I want you to really think about that. Now, we, <laughs> you know, in the school district, we are teaching these kids to be tolerant, to, to, to understand other people, to not use their power or status in, in an abusive way. And you're sending a completely different message to these kids. And, and I really wish uh, you'd quit working against us and start working with us. Thank you. I, 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 Mike, I don't understand if you're, how are we working against you? I, I, I just, no, I'm not. 
against what we're, what we're trying to teach the kids about tolerance and accepted, acceptance and understanding, we're being undermined when we have city leaders saying, uh, no, um, hatred and bigotry is okay. And I'm not going to have um, anybody talking to each other in the audience because what will happen is what just started percolating there. Uh, so um, we've been doing good so far. We, we've been here a while, and I think everyone's done a good job, and I appreciate that. So uh, everyone's going to continue to state their views if they want. I'll be here as long as anybody wants to be here. Um, but we're going to please uh, not go back and forth. Everybody has a right to make their comments. Okay, you might not agree with it, and you might inside, uh, you know, get a little uh, wound up, but uh, I'm just going to take a deep breath, okay? Mike, if you mind to continue, you may. Uh, I, did I answer your question, Mr. Sebastian? Okay. Very good. I saw a hand go, ma'am. Hi, I'm Bonnie Valentine. I live in Akron, but um, do attend the NAF. My family has passes. Um, and I was taking um, I, um, we did live in the, in the falls for, um, 20 some years, and, uh, one of the reasons we did join the NAT was because of the family-oriented, um, structure and atmosphere, and as far as the social agenda, it should just be, in my opinion, um, when the law changes, we'll consider something. Otherwise, it's gone. Um, and as far as protecting the children, this board has gone so far as to implement the no sexual predators policy you have, um, which on one hand I agree with, on the other hand I'm not sure. So, of course, that wasn't my decision. But, um, we are, as married people, penalized in our taxes, our state, federal, city taxes, as far as when, not all of you, but the older members of the board were raising their families from young. And you could live on a one income uh, and, raise, and have your wife stay at home and raise the children this and that. In the taxes, that has not continued equally, like with inflation. So therefore, some of us have to go out and get other jobs. And I see what you were saying about back then, it was to help the people with one family income. Um, so please, please don't penalize us here. Um, that was another reason we joined the NAT, because we could get that marriage discount. Um, on the other hand, I was checking out the discrepancies and things, too, in the pay rate, um, just by your sheet that you have out there on the counter. Um, I would benefit, personally, from um, a household, um, one adult, two adult, three adult, four adult discount, because I have a household of children who are adults. So they can all get discounts too instead of everyone paying a single price. That's a discrepancy I think that you know you can address some other time. But um, even the military, I looked at it and I says, honey, are you getting the military discount? He says, no, it's for active duty. And I'm sitting there like, how do active duty military get the discount when they're in Iraq? <laughs> so it, as far as that state, it doesn't state military vets, and, and I understand they come home for furlough, but I'm sure they don't spend a whole lot of time at that when they're home for two weeks. So that's a discrepancy that I found that I, you know, you guys can address when you're going to address that. But as far as this year today, I really urge you to um, just say we're not going to touch it because of the social issue. It is very easy for one person to circulate a petition um, for the voters to vote for an issue. Now, if anybody wants to do that, you know, they can go do that. And
and then make it a citywide kind of thing. But um, as far as you know, pushing the agenda just because I didn't get the discount, that happens everywhere. I don't get a discount because I'm a woman sometimes. Okay, that's life. My kids don't get privileges because they're kids. You know, it, it just. So I urge you, please, to just. We're going to keep everything. Oh, my other thing was, did you think about, or were planning to, change the rate structure before these two gentlemen came and raised this issue? Thank you. I'll be brief. I'm, I'm Larry Kahn. I actually am from Stowe. As you're aware, we are dealing with similar issues in Stowe because of our mayor. I just want to reiterate what Pastor Chris was saying. This is not about hate. This is about us standing up for what we feel marriage is, is what God intended. This is what it's about. Thank you. Sorry. It's a public meeting. Um, well, okay. Um, several people here have expressed um, diversity and tolerance for the homosexual lifestyle. There was no hate or bigotry expressed, and I really am upset. Um, the only people who have used negative terms is this gentleman. Every Several people have expressed they live their lifestyle and you may not agree with it, but that's their right. That is not hate speech and um, I really resent that, that those comments were made. People have been very um, understanding and actually the Bible teaches to love your enemies and pray for them. And most people here, um, I'm sure, are doing that. So, thank you. Thank you. If this is going to truly be about rate structure and it's going to be soberly debate, debated amongst the board, I think it needs to be considered um, the statements that some have made publicly and privately and email correspondences and letters and other things um, as to whether they are fit or able to soberly debate this strictly on rate structure and not on a social agenda. Um, if that's how you're going to do this, rate structure, and fairness of rate structure, then those of you who have made statements that make this very clearly a social agenda and a personal social agenda need to recuse themselves. Sir, go ahead. Hi, my, uh, my name is Nelson Balsinger, and uh, I would like to say when the board votes, you got five votes. Uh, if only one vote for it, is that the majority? Like you're going to take and do, we got 4% homosexuals. They're going to rule with the 96 other percent ones.
and for our belief for you, Savior. No one's shoving religion, religion down anyone's throat or anything like that. But the point of the gospel is that that's why Jesus died. He loved us to set us free. So from my perspective, I'm compelled out of love. Compelled out of love. And if you're going to quote me, compelled out of love. Compelled out of love to speak truth. Compelled out of love. Not anger, not hate, not bigotry, not discriminatory, not, not, not bullying someone, nothing like that, but love. Out of love, we are defending marriage. To do otherwise, listen, would be unloved. If I was seeing someone go towards a cliff and I didn't warn them, I'd be wrong. So this is not right for our culture, our community, and a loving person would never intentionally allow another person to not try to achieve the very best for their life. So that's what this is about. Two things, uh, three things on the Park and Rec specific. Uh, Park and Rec was suggested to take funding to pay down to accommodate the situation. I just think that's not fiscally wise. I don't do that personally. I try to pay as much off of my own as I possibly can, pay extra payments on my car when I can. That's just wise. That's wisdom. Um, I believe it's necessary to address this, the motion that was made last board meeting. Um, to me, it violated the moral value of marriage. And also, potentially, potentially, and I know, Tim, I, I wrote the, the letter to you guys today. Um, potentially would have violated the state constitution had that passed. I want to thank the three that made sure it didn't pass. The other two, gentlemen, Tim, the, the, the motion you made had gay marriage and domestic, you, you had it all in the verbiage. To me, that was, I, I realized after you and I have communicated some, that that's not necessarily your intent, but... That verb which was in that and it was seconded by this board. I, I do, out of care for our community, ask you to, to apologize and recant of that motion, and I hope that you will. Thank you. And I will, I haven't really responded to anybody directly um, because I'm, we're taking it all under advisement and we'll, we'll cash it out. But I, I will respond to that if you, you ask me directly. Uh, the motion I made, I meant to make. I'm not going to apologize for that. It didn't pass, it didn't pass. So it, it didn't move forward. Um, when we had an interchange today, you brought it up, I, so I feel comfortable talking about it. Um, what we talked about earlier, um, what Mrs. Colavecchio said was discussed at the meetings that they had, that an alternative way would be, well, maybe not way, an alternative plan to maybe reconcile the two rate structures would be to, for one adult or two adults kind of take all of these definite, not change the definition of marriage, and I know that's, there's, we might never come together on that exactly, but to remove it from the rate structure altogether, similar to how it's not in our rate structure of waterworks, um, it, that's a, another option. So, just to maybe make the water even uh, okay, I believe that we're done. Did everyone, if everyone feels they had an opportunity to talk, I hope you did. Um, Park and Rec has, I'm speaking for myself, but they have my email address. Uh, they have my cell phone number, which I'm authorizing them to give to you if you want to talk to me before the next meeting. Uh, you can always send any correspondence to um, the Park and Rec office, and they forward it to us immediately. Uh, so I do appreciate all your comments. I appreciate how uh, we conducted the meeting. Take a deep breath, drive home carefully, have some ice cream, uh, and uh, enjoy the weekend. And again, thank you for attending. Right, well, you know what? Our next meeting is when, folks, just so everybody knows for the record. up here. May 10th is our next meeting. It will be here at 5.30. And at that point, we'll have some type of resolution um, to this discussion and this issue, and then we'll, we'll move forward. So we're going to take a recess. Uh, that will give everybody an opportunity if, uh, if you'd like to uh, go home. You're welcome to do that. We're going to continue with the one day. Thank you again. So we'll take five.